so thank you for the introduction. I thank also the, the scientific committee to give me the, the opportunity to, to have this talk today and to share uh, my recent results uh, with you. Uh, I will talk about the, the pre-formulation. It, uh, it is our latest uh, project, uh, which concerns the development of uh, uh, rectal formulations for pediatric uh, antibiotherapy. Uh, and it was uh, financially supported by the Grand Challenges of Canada, and all the work was performed in at the University of Bordeaux. So, a few words about the context to better understand uh, our uh, questions after. Uh, the, the, the project was to develop so rectal formulations for uh, developing countries, which would be uh, easy to administer, feasible, uh, stable in tropical conditions, including ambient conditions, uh, bioavailable, and of low cost. So to, to know which forms, which drug dosage forms we could further consider, we needed to have uh, the answers to some pre-formulation questions uh, that I would like to to present here. Beco before going to the pre-formulation, a few words about ceftriaxone. So ceftriaxone is a third-generation cephalosporin. It's class three from biopharmaceutical uh, classification system, meaning that it's uh, highly water-soluble, solu but crosses, doesn't cross well the biological membranes. It's well-tolerated, and it's got a large antibacterial spectrum, which is the reason why it was chosen for this study. The commercially available uh, formulations for uh, these uh, uh, antibiotics are extemporaneously reconstituted uh, solution for injection. And the fact that it was extemporaneously reconstituted let us think about its stability. So we went on first uh, with bibliographic and then with some preliminary uh, screening. Uh, to concerning its stability, and it turned out that ceftriaxone was rather unstable molecule. It degrades relatively rapidly in water solutions, and it is sensitive to pH. The optimal pH was found to be at 7.5, uh, and as, as soon as you discard from this pH, the degradation is even faster. Uh, the temperature and oxidation can also, uh, can also induce some degradation. When present in its powder form, uh, the ceftriaxone is a hydrate. It's a white crystalline uh, powder, which for one molecule of ceftriaxone contains three and a half molecules of water. And in its powder form, uh, it presents a bad flowability, so it doesn't flow freely, which will have an importance for further formulation studies. So to answer our main question, which is the aim of this talk, so which rectal form can we formulate, we needed to have several answers, namely which excipients can we use, what can we use in particular water in our formulation, and if it's the case, how many in which conditions, in which atmospheric condition can we work, and which pharmaceutical processes can we apply while preserving ceftriax and long-term stability. So the first point was to make binary mixture and to evaluate the compatibility of ceftriaxone with several um, excipients, including absorption enhancers, suppository bases, solid form excipients, and semi-solid or liquid form excipients. So the methodology was to prepare binary mixtures uh, and then uh, put them in aluminium blisters and store them in ICH classical conditions for accelerated aging for a determined time up till six months and after six months we evaluated the content of the ceftriaxone uh, using HPLC validated method and the criteria were first less than 10 percent of ceftriaxone loss and no degradation products that uh, appeared because the, the, the method allowed us to see the degradation products. The result of this study, out of 87 excipients tested, 
there were 48 excipients compatible, meaning that there were still 39 excipients that turned out not compatible, only in, bi in binary mixtures. Among compatible excipients, hopefully we found an absorption enhancer. It was a deoxycholate of sodium which was found to be compatible, some other was not. Then excipients for solid dosage forms were nearly all compatible. However, we had difficulties to find the excipients either for suppository bases, none was compatible, or for liquid and semi-solid dosage forms, in this case, some excipients turned out to be compatible, but a lot were not. We established at the end of this work a list of compatible excipients. A specific interest was put on the water. Uh, preliminary results showed that water solutions were not, were not stable. Uh, we wanted to know whether it would be possible to use water in our formulations and this, uh, for this reason we sprayed the water over the ceftriaxone and powder and then we blistered, we mixed the blends, we blistered it and the methodology of evaluation was the same as previously but in addition we dosed the water, the total water in each uh, condition and for each time uh, of sampling. So Carl Fischer was the method used for the total water determination. So here are the results. As you can see, for the control condition here, here, you have 10% of water, 9.5% of water come from crystalline water, it's uh, three and a half molecules of water, so 0.5% additional 0.5% is associated in raw material of ceftriaxone. And it is stable this way, as you can see, up till six months of accelerated ac stability study, there is no significant decrease. However, for the further samples, the more water was sprayed over the powder, the more was degradation. Here the, we can see the degradation was not significant but becomes significant uh, when the, the quantity of water uh, was higher added, was higher than 2.1%. Up till 1.8% of water added, uh, it was the, uh, the ceftriaxone remained stable uh, during accelerated uh, aging conditions. Another point about the water was, the, the question was, the, the water which is put in the formulation can degrade ceftriaxin, but does ceftriaxin takes water, take water from the environment, namely from the atmosphere? So the different expositions to various ICH inspired conditions that you can see here of the powder were performed and after the same methodology was used for the evaluation of long-term ceftriaxone stability. The results here show that ceftriaxone was not significantly degraded in all these conditions, meaning that it does not seem to be very hygroscopic. And the idea beyond this study was to know whether or not it would be possible at the end to produce the forms in local tropical conditions, and it could be the case. An uh, additional point that we wanted to study was which pharmaceutical processes could be applied to the ceftriaxone while preserving its long-term its long stability. So this is the reason why the powder underwent grinding, compaction and crushing wetting and drying, and leophilization. So compaction and crushing here was to simulate a uh, dry granulation process because at the beginning I told you uh, the ceftriaxone is a powder that does not flow freely, so granulation could be possibly considered. And wetting and drying here was to simulate wet granulation process. So the same methodology was applied once again. And here are the results. As you can see in green here, 
When ceftriaxone and powder is wetted, but well dried after, meaning that we checked that the water content at the end of drying was uh, comparable to the control condition, the long-term stability of ceftriaxone was preserved after six months of accelerated stability study. It was the same result for lethalization. However, when we applied physical forces to the, to the powder, like in grinding or in compaction and crushing, a moderate but still significant loss of ceftriaxone was observed after six months of stability study meaning that these two conditions could alter a long-term ceftriaxone stability. We went on a little bit and we tested, we, we uh, applied X-ray diffraction uh, and here I'm presenting you the samples which, in, uh, which induced ceftriaxone long-term degradation, which was spraying addition of water at relatively important quantities and here is the example of grinding. And as you can see, there are some differences in the diffractogram here and here. The question that remains open for the moment that we are still working on, uh, because we applied this, uh, this uh, strategy to all conditions and there were some small, uh, small modifications even uh, in, the, in the cases where no long-term uh, degradation was observed, with, when ceftriaxone remained stable. And what we do not know still for the moment is to which extent the modification of diffractogram uh, uh, after uh, impacts the, the long-term stability of the ceftriaxone. So to conclude, we established a list of compatible excipients, not all were compatible, and for further formulations, if, if additional excipients are needed, it will be uh, necessary to test them before using them. The, the particular case of water was studied, up till 2% of water can be added to the formulation. However, if more is added, uh, the degradation of ceftriaxone occurs if it's not dried. But when it is dried, the ceftriaxone remains stable. Another point was that ceftriaxone did not appear very hygroscopic, so possibly we could consider a local production in tropical zone in developing countries to reduce the cost. The high frictional forces could affect the long-term stability as shown by the moderate decrease of ceftriaxone content. However, we performed uh, the additional studies where the compaction of ceftriaxone was done with forces comparable to those uh, using for tableting, and this, uh, in this case, ceftriaxone remained stable. So, about, uh, if I try to answer to my first question, which was which drug dosage forms could we consider? In our project, we could not consider the fatty suppository because it melts at ambient tropical conditions. So it was not, uh, it was not considerable to, to take this option. The soluble suppositories were not compatible. The basis for the soluble uh, suppository were, were not compatible. And in our specific project, extemporaneously reconstituted forms were considered as too complicated to be administered by non-trained non people in rural zones. However, this point could be different uh, in different uh, applications. Which, which uh, th this brings us to two to families of, of form forms, solid forms, which could be tablets or hard gelatin capsules. Uh, I told you at the beginning that the, the, um, the flowability was bad, so, but as we checked, granulation would be possible, so we could find uh, solutions here. And then liquid and semi-solid formulations, as long as they are non-aqueous, and we could consider suspensions, self-emulsifying drug delivery systems, or oleogels. I would like to thank 
Now, people from my unit that changed the name with the first uh, January here, so this is the new name, Camp Dio Farm. I would like to thank also to the group of, our, of uh, clinicians that work with us, helping us uh, choosing uh, uh, all the clinical, uh, clinically relevant uh, points, which were from Oxford and uh, uh, Thai University, World Health Organization that managed the project, and Hoffman Laroche for their information about ceftriaxone. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Kaas. So are there, are there any questions, comments? Yes, please. Thanks for, for the interesting talk. Uh, so you, you say that when you expose your uh, drug to water, it gets uh, degraded. Um, I just wondered whether uh, you've taken into account the duration of exposure uh, during the granulation to water, because that will impact, isn't it, on um, the degradation? Yes, well, what we, what we did is we exposed, we sprayed the water over the powder, and then we blended it and we put it in the blister as soon as possible. Uh, as you could see from our results from Carl Fisher dosage, uh, a, a part of the water sprayed evaporated before being blistered and perhaps in the small quantity of the air which was still in the blister. This was the reason why we dosed specifically each content using Carl Fisher to have the water of each content, the precise water which was still inside. And then the stability studies went on up till six months. So the, the first part, which was before blistering, was done as quickly as possible to avoid the evaporation, but then it went up till six months. What I didn't present is the same study went on uh, at ambient conditions, the results were the same. That was more uh, about uh, the granulation aspect, because during the granulation you're exposed to... Oh. Yeah. You, you wanted to say when, when we spray, uh, when we wetted the powder and dried it after. So we, yes, we indeed, uh, we did uh, measure that by using two, in this, um, using two uh, different uh, protocols with different lengths. And the first one was quite rapid. And the second one uh, was up till two hours to make sure that we covered the, 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 the um, the common uh, duration of uh, when the powder was wetted. The degradation was not significant, but what was very important is to well dry after. So we needed at each time, we, we, the loss on drying was not precise enough because we had uh, some crystalline water which, uh, was, which left also uh, on the loss on drying effect. This is the reason why we needed to, to, to make a Carl Fisher determination. And what was important was not that much the time of the wetting, but the drying that was after. Thank you. Are there any further questions? If not, thank you once again, Professor Carl. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>